Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today is part two of the self-tie tutorials. We're going to be going over the futomomo and the mermaid tie. I mean, they're both leg ties, but technically the futomomo design can be done on the arm or one arm if you're self-tying yourself, because I don't know how you're going to tie the other one up. Don't attempt to tie both your arms up. That is a bad idea, which is a great segue into our safe, sane, and consensual talk in the beginning. Safety. Be sure to have some safety shears, some scissors on you. Rope is replaceable. Your life is not. Sane. Be sure to practice these things in a proper state of mind. And consensual. We are consenting adults. Communication is key. Now, since we are doing self-ties, you would notice that Marie did not even show up. It was a whole thing. Hey, Marie, uh, wh wh where are you? I, I, I know it's a self-tie day, but you know how nervous I get when I film. I need a cheerleader. Oh, the mouth on her. The whole thing was very unprofessional. But today I will be the rope bunny. I will be the rope bottom, if you will. Speaking of rope bunny, I had someone in the comments ask me where the term rope bunny came from. And I wasn't entirely sure. So I had to do some deep digging, and I mean deep digging because there is a distinct lack of proper information on the subject. So I had to piece a lot of information together, and I think I've come up with the best answer. Now, it should come as no big surprise that the world changed after World War II. One of the biggest things for bondage was the cross-pollination between Eastern and Western fetishism. American soldiers were now living in army bases stationed in Japan. A few of these things that the soldiers could pick up from the red light district were publications like Catan Club and Uramado Magazine. These bondage publications found their way over the Pacific and gave rise to the Western culture's adoption of Shibari and Kimbaku. Now, in the 1950s and 60s, it was not uncommon for a woman who was often seen as a lewd model or a showgirl to be referred to as a bunny. This attribute stayed in the mainstream with the rise of the Playboy Bunny, something that also followed one of the most infamous cartoon burlesque dancers, Jessica Rabbit. She had that same PG bunny connotation to her name. So rope bondage made its way over to America. Bunnies were lewd models. Rope bottoms all of a sudden became rope bunnies. One of the interesting things I noticed while doing this deep dive is that the Japanese do not have a term for rope bunny. It's mostly just rope model or nawa maduru. And beyond all of that, Japanese don't even have their own words for subs and doms. There is a Japanese word to be submissive in nature, jujun, but that's not something they use for their kink. Njo gets used for a female who is a sub, m being the masochist portion of it and jo being the shortened version of female. But that is a whole different story that I will cover when I do a comprehensive mini-series about the history of Shibari and Kimbaku. And moving back to Rope Bunny, researchers at the University of Cairo have discovered the earliest known record of BDSM-related human activity. They found what is being described as the Rosetta Stone of human sexuality. And of particular note on this stone was the juxtaposition of three new hieroglyphs, young, rabbit, and tied up, perhaps one of the earliest uses of the term rope bunny, which would then date the term to about 2000 BCE, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Now if that doesn't whet your appetite for some ropes, I don't know what will. So let's get to some of the tutorials. To get started, I'm going to show you how to do one of the most important ties you'll learn, the single column tie. Let's go. This is something you will be using a lot. So you'll be going two and a half times over something like, let's say, oh, I don't know, a wrist for right now. You wanna make sure that you have two fingers worth of give. So you're gonna have your loop here, you're gonna go over and then under. And with the other rope, you're just gonna make another little loop. You will insert first loop into the second loop and pull. Now there's a way to make a slip out of the single column tie that makes it easier to get out of, especially if you're going to be self-tying. I'll teach you that now too. So we're back at two and a half times over what we're tying. We're going to go over and under just like before. We are going to create a loop just like before. It's always important that this uh, loop will go over itself. 
Now instead of just sticking this loop in there, we're going to fold it in half. Our loop is now folded at a half and tied in there. The bottom half of it we can pull with the rope and tighten, but this first half up here, if you pull this, it's just going to pull the loop through. But if you pull this way, it's going to undo that tie. Makes it ten times easier to get out of it, especially if you need to in a hurry. Like you were tying yourself up and the pizza man got there. Now, let's get started. So, I already have a single column tie wrapped around my leg in preparation for the futomomo. There are two easy ways to prepare yourself for the tie, one of which is putting your back up against a wall, that way you're not engaging your core the entire time. Because if you're crunched up without the support trying to get the tie done, you're going to want to do it quickly so your abs don't give out. And if you're doing it quickly, that means you're probably not doing it safely. Give yourself a little support, makes it a lot easier. The other way, which is the way that I'm going to be doing it, is like this. So I have my single column tie wrapped around my ankle. I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit. You wanna get your heel as close to you as possible. And you're gonna get it a little bit taut and do your first wrap around your thigh. The thigh, you could wrap around a little bit more harsh than you're going to your shin, cause shins can be a little bit sensitive. I'm just gonna hold that there as I get the first wrap around. I'm gonna hold the rope taut here. And I'm gonna give that a little bit of tightness. And then we'll begin again. We're gonna do about four to five of these. I'm just gonna hold the tension here with my finger. As I pull around, I'll take the rope and pull this way. That way, it's a little bit more tight on my quads. And then wrap around the shins. You don't wanna pull on the shins. Wrap around. Pull tight on the quad. And not wrapping too tight around the tibia your angry shin bone. Now we're gonna wrap around. Now on this last wrap around, you wanna make sure it's particularly tight on this top quad part here. Now this one's gonna begin our bridging going down these lines. So we're gonna go over this first rope and then we're gonna go underneath it. Then we're gonna go over the rope we just were and underneath again. And that creates basically an overhand knot. So, same thing. We're going to go over, under, over the rope we were, and under again. Bring down the tension, tighten it up a little bit. We're going to go over, under, over, and then under. Make sure your ropes are nice and straight. If you're running out of rope at this point, you can do an over, under, and try and tie it off, or you can just go underneath and we can start doing the same ties on the other side of the leg, which is what I am going to do. And I'll flip over for you. Now once over on this side, you're going to be doing something a little bit different because you don't have the exact same angles as you did the other way. So what you're going to do is you're going to make a little loop. You're going to place your loop underneath the rope so you got a hole. And then you're going to pull your rope through. You can tighten that by pulling on the rope and just kind of wrapping it around. It's gonna be a little bit awkward, I know. Same thing for the next one. Make a little loopy, put it through, and then weave your rope through the eye. Tighten that up and begin the next one. All the people who have both a rope and a foot fetish are gonna get a hell of a time out of this video. Last little loopy, pull through the eye. Now we do have some leftover rope. Uh, what I'm just gonna do is do a little bit of weaving in and out until I can get back to uh, my bottom single column tie to finish it off. So all I'm going to do is go under this rope here, under this bridge right here, and then we're gonna go over and under, over and under, and we'll find our attachment down here. Gonna make a little loopy, pull it through, tighten it up. Got a little bit of rope left over, but that is okay. If you wanted to, you could probably go back around and do the same thing on the other side. But with this amount of rope, you can probably finish off a different tie. So if you're doing both the legs, you can tie those together in the middle. And I will be flipping back over now. Now there is a great Kimbaku variant on how to do these knots. And I will show you how to do that now. 
So we're back into this position. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our rope over and then we're going to do the same thing, the same start. We're going to pull it over, we're going to go over and under, but instead of going over this rope and under this side, we're just going to continue on. So we're going to go over and under, over and under, make it a little bit as tight as you want, over and then under. Now this will definitely pull it down and will definitely make the leg a little bit more tight. This is definitely more on the bondage side of it rather than the aesthetic shibari side of it. That is the Futo Momo, which in Japanese basically just means thigh, the thigh bind. Let's move on to the mermaid tie. Now for the mermaid tie, we're just gonna find the middle of our rope, gonna go around and cinch it. Now this is just a simple cinch on our hitch. We're gonna tighten it a little bit, move it around to the other side, and then we're gonna wrap around. Now once around, we're gonna go over this rope and make a little loopy right here. After making this little loopy, we're going to resume just underneath the original. We're gonna try and keep our loopy because it will undo itself very quickly if you let go of it. Now, once we go back around, you can tighten it up a little bit, put the new rope through the loopy, create another loopy, and then go back around. Once back around, we're gonna put the new line through the new loopy and make a new, new loopy. Go back around again, once around with the new line, put it over and through to make a new loopy, and continue the process. Once back around, I'm pretty sure you've picked up on the pattern, Begin the process again. Make a new loopy, go around. Now once you're basically out of rope, you're gonna hold on to the last loopy in the line. You're gonna go around your leg and from behind, pull yourself out of that loop and then tie it off as you please. For the time being, we'll just do a little bit of a slip knot. And then you have yourself there, the mermaid tie. If you want to, you can even tie another rope at the ends of this rope and just keep going down until you're at your feet. Now once you get down to your feet and you have extra rope, try playing around and experimenting with different designs and weaves around toes and your foot. Try to safely come up with some way to showcase those little toesies of yours. Make some art, specifically foot art, which Quentin Tarantino would pay a lot of money for. Now one of the great things about the mermaid tie is how easily it comes off. They're just little loops, so they come off immediately, in case you need to get out immediately. And now I'm free. Uh, so this is the Futomomo when applied to the arm. As you can see, it's just about the same thing. You use the single column tie right here around the wrist like you would the ankle, go around, and then do your overhand knots going down. Basically the same thing. I will tell you to exercise caution a little bit more so than usual because it is utilizing one of the things that can cut the rope with. And please do not do it on both arms unless someone is doing it to you. You cannot do it yourself. That is not a challenge. I highly recommend just leaving it to one arm. All right, I'm gonna get out of this now. All right, those were the self ties, the Fudomomo and the mermaid tie. I hope you enjoyed them and I hope you have fun safely playing around with them. This video is brought to you by two sponsors, NotHeadNylon.com and the beautiful people over at Patreon who make these artistic endeavors possible. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and leave a comment down below of what kind of shibari or kambaku ties you would like me to teach you. As always, I'm Rory. This is my brain. Fairly certain it works. Be safe and go create some art.